Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation. Net Asset Value in AV. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Net Present Value in AV, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by James Chin, updated July 22nd, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping in mind the two major categories of investments, that being the fixed income, typically the bonds, and the equities, typically the common stock. Also keep in mind other tools you might be using such as mutual funds and ETFs to help you to diversify as opposed to for example investing solely in individual stocks individual bonds keeping that in mind we're asking what is net asset value in AV net asset value is the net value of an investment funds assets less its liabilities divided by the number of shares outstanding so for investing in a fund such as a mutual fund for example that's going to be pooling money together pooling that money together so that will help us as individual investors be able to diversify with less overall uh, investment in general then we're going to value that fund so the net uh, net asset value is the net value of an investment fund assets less its liabilities divided by the number of shares outstanding so most commonly used in the context of mutual fund or an exchange traded fund that being the etf the nav the net asset value is the price at which the shares of the funds registered with the u.s securities and exchange the sec regulatory body are traded so understanding net asset value, the NAV, for uh, companies and businesses, entities, the difference between the asset and liabilities is known as net assets or the net worth of the capital of the company. So when we think about the balance sheet of a company, we're thinking where people stand as of a per certain point in time, assets representing what the company has. From a company standpoint, they might have cash, they might have property, plants, and equipment, for example. We're gonna try to value those assets. And then the liabilities and equity, in terms of the accounting equation, represent who, they, who has claim to those assets. Either third-party liabilities, like a bank, or the owners, the shareholders in that case. You can also think of it as assets minus liabilities equals the equity. Therefore, the equity in total is in essence, the kind of book value of the company. In other words, if you were to liquidate the company, then you could think of the assets as what they would get in cash, the liabilities, the third parties that they would have to pay off, the difference being the equity net assets, which is what would be distributed if it was valued at, at you know book value, if they were able to get the same amount of cash, for example, for the assets that they sold. So the term NAV, net asset value, is applied to the fund valuation and pricing, which is arrived at by dividing the difference between assets and liabilities by the number of shares held by the investor. So if you take that net value then uh, on the fund, then we're gonna try to allocate those out on to the number of shares. So we got a per share net asset value, which can be thought of as you know the value on a per share kind of basis. The funds in AV represents a price share value of the fund, which makes it easier to be used for valuing and transacting the fund shares. So obviously we wanna take that value allocate it over an, like these equal units in a similar way as a company values its ownership through equal kind of stocks and the fact that they're all got those equal units allows it more easily to be tradable so nav nest asset value is often close to or equal to the book value of a business so the net asset value in av assets minus liability divided by the total number of outstanding shares is the formula Companies considered to have high uh, growth prospects are traditionally valued more than NAV might suggest. NAV, net asset value, is most frequently compared to market capitalization to fund undervalued or overvalued investments, mutual funds, and NAV. So oftentimes we're thinking about the NAV, net asset value, as it applies to basically you know the mutual funds where we're pooling the money together in order to be able to diversify, get the benefits of that pooled money being able to invest in different things more so than we could do on our own with a limited amount 
of resources. Mutual funds collect money from a large number of investors, then use that money to invest in securities such as stocks, bonds, and money market instruments. Each investor gets a specified number of shares in proportion to their investment amount. The pricing of each share is based on the NAV, the net asset value. Unlike a stock whose price changes are, are posted throughout the day, mutual fund pricing is based on the end of the day methodology based on the activity, the security in the fund. So in other words, if we imagine this fund here that we are investing in, we're trying to pool our money together, the, the, then the fund is going to be buying the stocks and the bonds and whatever investments that are going to go into the fund in accordance with whatever uh, restrictions we have on the funds, then clearly we have to value what that what the assets, the underlying assets of the fund are, and we, we then need to value that on kind of a per unit type of basis. When you think about the stocks themselves, individual stocks, they are selling on the market so we can kind of value the individual stocks as they are traded if they're traded on the market because all the stocks are basically the same when you're looking at a mutual fund you're, you're typically having the mutual fund be managed and then you're gonna have to look at all the underlying value or stocks and whatnot whatever the investments are which individually can be determined by the market because those are things that are trading on the market to help you to get the value of the fund itself therefore and that's going to be kind of like the net uh, asset value but you can't really do that or oftentimes you're not going to do that here during the during the trading day all the time you're going to do it periodically oftentimes basically at the end of uh, the day so at the end of the trading day managers of a mutual fund compute the closing price of all the securities within its portfolio adds the value of any additional assets accounts for liabilities and calculate nav based on the number of outstanding shares nav is closed end funds versus open end funds so now we got the concept of a closed end fund versus an open end fund so an open end fund can issue an unlimited number of shares does not trade on exchanges and is priced each day at the close of trading at the, their nav net asset value so these are the ones we often think of with like mutual funds they're not trading in the same way on the exchanges as say uh, stocks themselves but they're going to be valued as of the end of the day based on the what underlying assets and the net asset value then so most mutual funds such as those in 401k plans so when we think about our retirement plans like a 401k 403b possibly an ira for example uh, are open in funds meaning the funds that they're going to use and i would typically think of the ira or the 401k plan the retirement plans as kind of an, an umbrella and the funds are are under are underneath in other words you could have the funds you could invest in similar kind of funds outside of the umbrella of a retirement plan the 401k plan you know so that's how i would typically think of it because you're putting money under the 401k plan not because they're unique investment types in terms of how the investment works but because you're getting a tax benefit for the 401k plan in exchange for restricting the capacity to pull the money out so uh, closed end funds are listed on a stock exchange trade similarly to securities and can trade at a price that not equal to their nav etfs trade like stocks and their and their market value can differ from their actual nav so now we're we're talking more like investment tools here that aren't going to be uh valued kind of like at the end of the day but they're going to act more like individual stocks on the market which has its pros and cons uh, one of the pros if you're trading these these funds for example similar to stocks kind of day trading them or want to trade them more actively then it could be more useful to, to not have them valued at the end of the day but for long-term investors that might not be as big of a problem so this allows for profitable trading opportunities for active etf traders who can spot timely opportunities so again if you're kind of actively trading in the market where many uh, long-term investors like in a 401k plan are not they're long-term then that could be a benefit on the etfs because you can trade during this so similar to mutual funds etfs also calculate their nav nest asset value daily at the close of the market for reporting purposes but also calculate and disseminate uh, intraday nav uh, multiple times per minute in real time 
So NAV, net asset value and fund performance. Fund investors often try to assess the performance of a mutual fund based on their NAV net asset value differentials between two dates. So an investor may compare the NAV on January 1st to the NAV on December 31st and see the difference in the two values as a gauge of the fund's performance. So in other words, now we're looking at a fund here that has, has funds within it. So obviously, when we're trying to value it, we want to value the fund as a, as kind of like, as if it was its own separate thing, like a separate stock in and of itself, in essence, even though it's really a compilation of a bunch of values within it. And one way to do that is to kind of compare the NAVs over time or across time. However, changes in NAV between two dates aren't the best representation of mutual fund performance. Mutual funds commonly pay out all of their income like dividends and interest earned to their shareholders. So it's kind of like when we're valuing the stocks, remember when we're valuing the stocks, one thing we're trying to do on the stocks is get a return in terms of, of the increase in the price of the stock, hopefully, so that we could sell the stocks possibly in a future time frame. But we're also going to be getting possibly dividends and, and if it was bonds interest from it as well. And that's another component of the income. So when we're trying to value what is actually happening, we got to take into consideration in a similar fashion with the mutual funds, for example, the the increase in the value as well as the payments that we got in terms of the the dividends and the interest now if you're in a 401k plan or something like that there might be like reinvestments you might be reinvesting like the dividends and the interest if, that, if that's a capacity or ability to have within a long-term retirement type of plan additionally mutual funds are also obligated to distribute the accumulated realized capital gains to the shareholders so as these two components income and gains are regularly paid out the nav decreases accordingly therefore though a mutual fund investor earns income and returns individual earnings are not reflected in the absolute nav net asset values when compared between two dates a reliable measure of mutual fund performance is the annual total return, which is the actual rate of return of an investment or a pool of investments over a given evaluation period. Investors and analysts also look at compounded annual growth rate, that's the CAGR, which represents the mean uh, annual growth rate of an investment over a specified period longer than one year. So example of NAV net asset value calculation, assume that a mutual fund has $100 million worth of total investment in different securities. So we got multiple people putting money into the mutual fund and they've got 100 million worth of total investments that are that are now buying different securities that are in alignment with that with whatever restrictions the management of the mutual fund has so uh, which is calculated based on the day's closing price for each asset so uh, it also has seven million dollars of cash and cash equivalents on hand as well as four million dollars in total receivables accrued income for the day is seventy five thousand dollars the fund has 13 million dollars in short-term liabilities and two million dollars in long-term liabilities accrued expenses for the day are ten thousand dollars the fund has 5 million shares outstanding. Using the above formula, the NAV is calculated as the NAV, you've got the 100 million, that's 100 million worth of total investment, plus the seven, seven uh, million. So it has 7 million cash. So that's the cash that it has, plus the four, 4 million total receivables. So that's another assets. And then we have the 75, that's the accrued income for, for the day. So, and then minus the 13 million short-term liabilities and the 2 million, which was the long-term liabilities, plus the 10,000 accrued expenses. And then we're gonna divide that uh, by the 5 million, which was, I believe, the number of the shares. Yeah, there it is, 5 million shares outstanding. And that gives us our $19.21. For the given day, the mutual fund shares will be traded at $19.21 uh, per share. What is NAVPS? The net asset value per share, the NAVPS of a fund is reported with its price quote 
with a broker or online financial portal. This value differs slightly from the fund's actual market price since NAVPS is calculated once per day, while the asset held by a fund may change in price throughout the day. What are the trading timelines for NAV? Well, NAV net asset value is computed and reported as of a particular business date. All of the buys and sell orders for mutual funds are processed based on the cutoff time at the NAV of the trade date. And regulators, uh, if regulators mandate a cutoff time of 3.30 p.m., then they buy and sell orders received before 3.30 p.m. will be executed at the NAV of that particular date. Any orders received after the cutoff time will be processed based on the NAV of the next business day. What is the difference between an NAV net asset value and shareholder equity? Equity is calculated including intangible assets, which can include items like patents, while NAV is calculated using only the tangible assets. So you've got this component of intangible assets. Those are the things that have value that they're putting on the books that you can't physically kind of touch. They're intangible. What's the bottom line? A uh, net asset value is the net value of an investment fund's asset less its liabilities divided by the number of shares outstanding. Funds can be opened or closed and the pricing of each share is based on NAV net asset value. The price of each fund share is reflected as the NAVPS or per share value.